Mio Shumeki is the second woman of color to win the Best Supporting Actress Oscar. In her unforgettable role in 1957's Sayonara, Miyoshi brings gentility and vulnerability to her character. Let's explore this supporting role and her journey to success. Sayonara's overarching theme is about the clash of cultures, in this case, the American and the Japanese cultures. It is forbidden to intermingle, date, and marry, but Miyoshi Umeki's character, Katsumi, marries a white American Air Force crew member, Joe Kelly, played by Red Buttons, who is stationed near Kobe, Japan, during the Korean War. Their love is pure and true. They love and take care of each other in opposition to the racist and bigoted American colonel who forbids international relations happening between the American men and Japanese women. He even refers to the Japanese people as native. In this case, the lead character, Ace Groover, an Air Force general of Southern origin, played by Marlon Brando, calls off his engagement to a white American woman to pursue the heart and affection of a talented and enigmatic Japanese stage performer, Hana Ogi, played by Miko Taka. This movie highlights the white savior influence on Asian women, as well as the white beauty standards, but also the fetishism of subservient Asian women to a white man. A rather heavy moment in the movie is when Kelly, Katsumi's husband, finds a leaflet for eye surgery in Katsumi's bag. He reprimands her to tears for ever considering even getting surgery to change her eye shape from her natural Asian look to an open Caucasian one. Kelly and Katsumi take care of one another from a place of love, undeniably, but one can't dismiss the comparison that white women are depicted as in the movie, as independent, rebellious, they won't cook for their partner, that is what they're painted as. Whereas Asian women are painted as nurturing, they're at their knees, cooking, cleaning, and washing for their men. It's interesting to see the comparison. It's not about which is better or not, but rather the expectation of society from women and what they need to do for men from a Western and an Eastern mentality. Furthermore, the segregation goes further, where all the married men who are married to Japanese women are forced to get transferred back to the US. The systemic separation is intentional by the US military and forces the now pregnant Katsumi and Kelly to split. Here comes the bittersweet ending, where the couple refuses to follow the orders and instead commits double suicide at their home in an embrace. It is custom for lovers to die together when they can no longer face life. It's a moving quote uttered by Hana Ogi when watching a beautiful, dramatic Japanese performance with Grover, Katsumi and Kelly earlier in the film. This scene foretells Katsumi and Kelly's fate. It's got this Romeo and Juliet undertone where one cannot fathom to live without the other and vice versa, so they both kill themselves to not suffer in this cruel world. However, for our main couple, Grover and Hana Ogi, despite some separation and conflict, they reunite in the end, and in spite of the law, they bid the military sayonara and go about their union as a soon-to-be married couple. I like that, with the exception of Ricardo Montalban, all of the Japanese characters are played by Japanese actors. Sayonara ultimately won four Oscars in 1958, including Miyoshi Umeki for Best Supporting Actress and Red Buttons for Best Supporting Actor. This win made Miyoshi Umeki the first Asian woman to win an Academy Award for acting. I absolutely adore the fact that Umeki dressed in a traditional kimono at the awards ceremony. It represented her pride in her origins and highlighted the beauty of authentic Japanese clothing. She did not opt for a modern Western dressing, but a beautiful, simple kimono with floral embroidery and a cute hairpin to match. Her joyous flight up the stage, the bow of respect and soft-spoken acceptance speech is classy and natural. She is the only actor of Japanese descent to win an Oscar in the acting category. Miyoshi Umeki was a singer before an actress. Actually, she was known as Nancy Umeki early on in her career. She immigrated to the US in 1955 after building a career as a jazz singer. In fact, she was known for her American jazz repertoire. 
She got signed to Mercury Records, released some singles and two albums, became a regular on a TV variety show, and as a result was scouted to star in her film debut in Sayonara, directed by Joshua Logan in 1957. Mamaki continued her acting career, like in The Flower Drum Song and some TV guest appearances. She got married, had a son with her first husband, and ultimately retired by 1972 to lead a more quiet and family-oriented life until her passing in 2007 from cancer at the age of 78. Much like Hattie McDaniel, who fed into the racial stereotypes at that time of sassy yet subservient servant roles, Miyoshu Meki, with the lack of choice she had, played the coy and subservient Asian woman who intertwined with the American life. Who was to judge these women when at that time these were the only roles allowed in racially segregated America? These roles paid these women's bills. These women helped open doors for other black and Asian actors, so stating that these women cast a negative light on their respective races by playing stereotyped roles is unfair. When asked about her speaking pidgin English in films, she said, I didn't like doing it, but when someone pays you to do a job, you do the job and you do your best. Miyoshi also helped other Asian actors get their foot in the Hollywood door. She was not a fan of fame, and all she ever loved was to entertain. So when she reached that level of satisfaction, she threw away her Oscar as a commentary that material things, prizes, mean nothing. Miyoshi found her happiness in more down-to-earth things, and that is why she is considered an enigma and a smart woman. Katsumi didn't find her American dream, but Miyoshi did. I, I really don't know what to say. I, I wish somebody would help me right now because I didn't expect so I had a, nothing in my mind but right now I thank you for everyone who helped me and you and you and all American people thank you.